Um, we're about halfway done. Is everyone all right? You're good? You need to stretch a little bit? We're all right? This is like um, perfect for, for those of you that don't like to read like me. Um, it's like books on tape, but on life, in real life. Um, so, uh, I just am trying to entertain myself. I'm sick. Anyone else sick? I'm like sick. I sip on. It's crazy. <laughs> Um, I'm trying not to blow my nose during these great readings. Um, but next up we have a reading by Patrick Rosal, and the title of the reading is Despedida, in praise of the local and the mundane. Patrick Rosal is the author of three full-length poetry collections, Bone Shepherds, My American Kundaman, and Up Rock, Head Spin, Scramble and Dive. His essays and poems have appeared in journals and anthologies, including American Poetry Review and Harvard Review. Patrick has won the Association of Asian American Studies Book Award, the Global Filipino Literary Award, and the Asian American Writers Workshop Members Choice Award. His performances, media work, essays, translations, and poems have been received in the United Kingdom, Germany, Italy, South Africa, Argentina, Argentina and the Caribbean. Patrick is currently a member of the Graduate Creating Writing Faculty at Rutgers University at Camden. Please welcome from Brooklyn, New York, Patrick Rosal. Yay! Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> um, I want to thank Renny for including me in this, in this great book. It's nice to see Evelina. I never see you in New York. Um, I, try, I was trying to do a lot of things with the essay. Um, um, the essay itself is sort of about, um, it's about writing and what the role of a writer is and what the role, by extension, what the role of language is in, in the world. And so um, what the essay tries to ask is, um, where is the local? Um, it begins in uh, sort of, I'm, I'm looking at this luxurious house that I'm renting while I'm living in the Philippines, uh, more fancy than anything that I've ever lived in before. And then, sort of meditation on this reading series that happens in Quezon City, and I'm listening to all the poems that people are reading, and I'm noticing that none of sort of like the local experiences are recorded in the, in the poetry there. And, um, and so that sort of, that made me um, start asking, asking a lot of questions. If any of you have been in a, in a writing workshop, you've heard, you've heard the dictum from the writing uh, professor or teacher say, uh, show don't tell, right? And, for me, that's more than an aesthetic dictum. It's, it's political and an, and, and an ethical um, uh, dictum as well, right? What is the relationship between language and our sensual lives? Why is, it that, why is it that a corporate vocabulary wants to erase our sensual lives? Why does imperialism want to erase our sensual lives? And why does literature want to record it? <clears throat> For four months, I lived one block away from Kalayan, one block you could say, from freedom. And I won't miss trying to cross that avenue's maddening traffic, but on a bright Sunday afternoon, I can stroll along Maginot to watch no less than five lively basketball games in a span of four blocks, except for one makeshift court where the big boy game is happening and they're likely playing for money. All of them are improvised with scrap wood backboards and buckets or hanger wire for hoops. And everyone has perfected their jab step, pump fake, and crossover wearing flip flops. <laughs> Just beyond the three point line, there's a guy laid out flat on the road, his torso stuffed beneath a jeepney. He's tinkering with the vehicle's underbody, his legs stretched into the path of passing motorists. And beside him on the curb, the charred garbage sit out in front of the Sorry Sorry store. I'll miss the abundance of everything ordinary, everything normal. And if with all this wonder, I've betrayed myself as an outsider, as an American, then so be it. One night, during one of our outdoor hangout sessions at a bar in uh, Loyola Heights, uh, my friend Joel Toledo, a poet from Quezon City, Joel began reciting from memory several long passages from Pablo Neruda, a poet who praised socks, salt, and Chilean stew pots. And each line Joel recited in English, I translated as best I could back into Spanish. We were calling in languages neither of us was born into, the ordinary things of a foreign land. I believe we are kin, those of us who now command the language that once ruled often bloodily our ancestors. 
But in reciting Neruda, it isn't the aristocrat's parlance or the governor's rhetoric we wield. It is the image and language of the everyday, the lovely mundane. Isn't this proof of something? My big house in Binyahan, the tricycles revving their two strokes, the taxi's rapid click of an axled cracked boot taking a right tight from Kalayan to Viluna, Josie's tone-deaf daughter with big lungs and an impeccable memory for Wonder Girls and Styx lyrics. Poetry is in all of that. The mining of details, especially during my stay here, raises some difficult questions for me as a poet, especially as an American now living temporarily in a country that suffered America for half a century as its master. What's my responsibility? Some older Filipino writers ask what I'm doing here, snicker a little at Filipino Americans who come to the Philippines to find their roots, and many Philams do come by their own admission looking for home. I have a home. They call it the armpit of America, polluted, a haven for bad fashion and big hair. I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> but there are places in New Jersey where I can hear Hindi, Tagalog, Spanish, and half a dozen styles of English all at the same time. The co-generation plants along the turnpike light up like a kind of Oz. And some Thursday nights, I can pull up a little to watch the college kids cruise past me, nodding their heads on their way to the Holland Tunnel, bumping 400 watt bass bottoms in the trunk. I can name a handful of our thieves and murderers, describe for you their hands. I know where to get a good falafel for cheap. I still curse bad drivers, and I'm sick of the young punk and his daddy's beamer mad dogging me on the parkway, all hyped up after watching boys in the hood. <laughs> I didn't come to the Philippines looking for my roots. I came here for stories, even if they aren't whole. My life has been a series of fragments. I know how stingy language can be with meaning. Like Neruda said, if you ask me where I come from, I must speak with broken things. I came here to find out that my grandfather was abandoned by his father, that he hopped on a boat to cut cane in Hawaii. Two generations later, I have cousins who live in a cinder block shack. I came to listen to a has-been expat actress who says I have no manners, no nation, no English of my own. I came to tell her to go to hell. That's what I came here for.